former head of state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a man who is interested in building lasting bridges in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Alaji Major Mustafa Retire. MC, I thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Ordinarily, I'm supposed to be speaking in Ibu. <laughs> but because there are some dignitaries in my entourage who are from the north, and for the sake of my father from southwest and other Yorubas here, I decide to speak in English so that they can understand. <laughs> All the same, I say, Ibo Penu! Ibo Penu! Ibo Penu! When I was whispering to speak in Igbo, one of our elders there said, Can you speak Igbo? I said to him, Aponyana Marewe. <laughs> the chairman of this occasion, Professor Antonia Maduke. Your Excellency, distinguished Eon, most respected wife of the distinguished leader we are celebrating today, embodiment of beauty and humility, our chief host, distinguished leader and my friend, the Ijele. The father of the day, His Royal Highness Ezi Henry, our father, our leader, most respected Archbishop Ehenacho, the founder and chairman of OPC, my father, Dr. Fashio, the special guest of honor, CSP Chioma Ejimwa. Distinguished daughter of the land, Chief Mrs. Ezin, Sir Prince Uche, National President of Haneda Youth Foundation, Chief Henry Opara, Chief Bride Nduka, my friend and distinguished leader, a senior spiritual leader, Pastor Prince Long John. President of Igbo Community from Abuja and Lagos here present. Mosop leader S. Ochuku. The veterans here present. Senior sons and daughters of Igbo land. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm supposed to be brief. But I think time has come when we must most respectfully be seen to occupy a corner where we will be speaking from the true spirit and reflection of the man we are celebrating. If the late Dean Chukumeka or Juku were to be here, what will he opt out for? Truth must be said. It may be bitter today, but that will be the exact sweet for tomorrow. If the vision in the man we are celebrating became one of the causes that brought about the friction of personalities, which brought about the civil war in itself, then it shows man has the capacity to look at issues from the point of view he occupies. Some are greater in wisdom, some have much more qualities of leadership than others. While others are seen an inch from here, some others are seen millions of miles far away from us. 
we differ. That is why for any community, or any given people, or any country that cares to live together should understand the fundamental thing is called unity. In the absence of unity, and identifying goals for the people from the point of view of unity, you will have people who may be scattered, and it does not matter what you do. You may be wasting your time doing routines, and once you don't have goals, you have a community that is totally blinded, meaning lack of leadership. Unity, lack of it has affected Nigeria in decades past, one of which caused the civil war in itself in a way. So today, the Igbo land requires exemplary, sincere, shining leadership for the challenges of tomorrow. Igbo land is ours. The pains of Igbo land is our own. Every street you look in Nigeria today, we must speak the truth. There are traces of poverty. These are the truth we should look at and address. What is causing the poverty? How many rich people do we have? Do the rich care for the poor? Do we have a welfare arrangement that takes care of the poor? Do the rich pay tight? For the Muslims, do they pay zakat? So unity from leadership to the lady are, to me, a fundamental factor that must be addressed. When the celebrant, the late chief Dim Odumeko Ojuku was alive and as a military officer, fairness, justice to people, exemplary leadership, painful as the situation might be, we are part of what is documented in his records. When, when situation detected that the war had to take place, most unfortunately, the war came and left us with an experience that is bitter. My advice as a son, as a young man, who would love peace and unity to radiate, just as late chief Ojukwe himself was preaching, before he left us, his love, affection, unity, and understanding to build the country. If we pray for Nigeria to break, if God Almighty were to give us an option as I speak, or to get ourselves united and realize the talents and the resources in us, while we are looking at the world, if our father, let Chief Ojuku were to be here, he will take the, the latter, meaning he will opt for unity and leadership for Nigeria to come together and lead the world. We have all it takes to lead the world. We have all it takes to show to the world. I was reading something about the lead leader. As a young man and as a senior officer, as a commander, he was highly enthusiastic in supporting junior leadership. And he was showing exemplary subordinateship to the seniors. And while doing this, he served in many parts of Nigeria. And his last point of call before he became military governor was Kano. His friends and associates, inclusive the monarchy from Kano and other leaders from all no fear in speaking the truth, and there is no fear in taking steps. But there is every offense in keeping law and not taking any step. For you to be settled with leadership, and you run away because of taking decisions, because people might accuse you, you are there wasting their time and wasting the trust in your hands. It is better to take a decision informed by well and sound advices and make mistakes than doing nothing about it. That is what he stood for. If what he did yesterday in his interaction with the people and 
one secret people do not know is that before Nigeria was zoned into six, the late Chief Ojuku, from his sound vision, was one of those who were with the late General Abach at that time. And if the aim of this decision is to promote, protect, and ensure unity of this country, then the zoning of Nigeria is an action of wisdom that today we can utilize to simplify our demonstration and unity. So with this in mind, let me say to our fathers in Ebola, to our contemporaries in Ebola, to men and women in Ebola, to the heroes, the veterans that fought the civil war from Biafra and all other parts of Nigeria, to the leaders now and before, and to those to come in future, we have a duty. The duty here is for most humbly, most respectfully, for the Ebolan to now stop looking backward. Look ahead. Let's look at the challenges that is before us. Let's take away the pains. Let's overcome obstacles. Let's provide leadership to the world. Nigeria has all it takes to lead not only Africa but this world. We are endowed with resources, human and with the Ebola. We are here. We are with Ebola. If oppression, suppression, were the tools used by some people, I must say there were few, and that was yesterday. It's another day. Time has come when the Ebola can stand on her feet. And the Ebola will take opportunities open. And Ebola will seek for protection and ensure the integrity of every son and daughter. There are gaps in the world. Ebola can produce it. Look at the opportunities that exist around the world. Many of those who are providing services that are rare, that mankind calls strange and outstanding, most of them are from Ebola. Let's hold together, hand hands together. We can do it. So long there is unity, so long there is a defined goal, there is no man that can take, take a step forward and create obstacles that will impose depression and oppression. With these short remarks, I bring goodwill of friends and associates across Nigeria in celebrating today and then in this colorful, historic, beautiful day in commemorating a leader who was real indeed. I thank you for the opportunity and I pray as we gaze into the future, people will wear their shoes, Amen. wear your socks, Amen. wear your top, look at the future, take it and look at it with confidence and zeal. That's some spirit with which let Chief Ojuku look at the world and took step and was recognized by the world that we are celebrating today. May we be. Amen. Yeah.